Hello guys, welcome to another video. Today again in the roots, different roots than I was last time. But for today's video, I'm going to be answering your questions that you sent to me through the Q&A that I did on YouTube and Instagram. So today I'll be answering some of these questions. So I got a couple questions on both Instagram and YouTube and I'm going to be answering the questions from YouTube first. Um, look at my comments, I see a question from Tag Games. he asked how old I am. I'm currently 22 years old, uh, 22 and a half about-ish, because in November on the 21st I'll be turning 23. Uh, second question I see is from Sub. Sub actually asked me two questions, of which one I'm going to be answering later on, because I got that question from quite a few people actually. So that's going to be in the later part of this video. But his second question was, what was your first reaction when you got to analyze for the Bentonex League? I heard this about at the end of May that I was an analyst for the Benelux League Season 5 Finals and I got two reactions out of that. I was very very happy and generous for this chance um, but I was also quite anxious because I have never analyzed for any esports professional game whatsoever uh, so I was quite anxious like could I be able to do this but I was really really happy about the chance as well and overall just super excited. Next question is from West on my from my Twitch chat. Uh, he asked, "Will you carry me, Senpai? His is that's his in-game name to champion, please." Um, I think if that would ever happen, it'd be the other way around because I am obviously not the better player out of these two. So um, I would love to, but I don't think I'm able to. <laughs> Next question is a pretty long question, so I'm actually going to be reading it off my phone. The question goes, how difficult was it to make yourself known on Twitch and YouTube? I tried using your tips from your videos, I make streaming tips videos, um, but it doesn't affect the numbers of viewers much. I'm sorry, I'm just scared, I can't see any growth on his stream and, and in YouTube and stuff. Um, I like getting these questions because, as you guys know, I was a teacher before. Uh, my job was explaining things and I love helping others, I love explaining stuff. Uh, for YouTube, this is quite the process we're going through myself as well at the moment. Um, and for Twitch, I would say you get a lot of tips in a lot of videos. If any of these tips don't work for you, I would say don't do this. One of the best tips that I can give and that I see a lot of people succeed with is consistency. If you have a schedule that you keep on coming back every single week, then people can expect you to go live at some point and that is really going to help you grow your Twitch. Next question is from Rem. He asks, how did you and Colin meet? Colin and I met on the internet. Uh, we did not meet on Twitch. Switch, not a dating site. Um, but yes, we met on the internet and that's about all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave the rest of this to you guys' imagination. Just, you know, make up your own story and make your own ending, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, and the last question that I got from YouTube, I got two more questions from YouTube, a little mistake here. Um, I got a question from Hidden Warrior and his question is, do you miss your teaching job? I do miss it to a certain degree. I, uh, I, when I was thinking about this, I kind of missed the positive things about teaching, the fun things about teaching. Whenever you get a really nice lesson, whenever uh, with PE, for example, you make a kid do something that he, that he did not dare to do or did not want to do, um, and you finally succeed with it, those are the positive and the fun moments that I miss. But the negative moments and the administration work, I do not miss at all at this point. Thank you, Jets, for constantly ruining the audio of the video. This is like about the 320th take that we're doing right now because every single time I'm trying to answer a question, we have to stop because there's on the background and I could scream AC 130 above, but that's actually true and it's really annoying with the audio at the moment. I'm sorry. I figured that it was a fun idea to pronounce everyone's names um, from the questions that they sent me, but I'm actually really bad at pronouncing names and I feel really anxious like when I pronounce someone's name wrong. So I'm very sorry in advance if I pronounce names wrong. Um, the next question is from Aragon Alper and he asked, what makes it this positive? And I get this question a lot. A lot of people tell me that I have a very positive mindset uh, on my stream and in Siege. Uh, the only thing I'm not positive about is my own skill in Siege. But um, what makes me this positive? There's a lot of things in Siege actually that you cannot control. Like for example, if you start up a ranked match or an unranked match and some of your teammates leave, that is not, not something that's in your power and you can't control this. And I forget that if I get mad at this or if I get upset about this, it is not something I can control and I can't do anything about it. I 
can't put any effect on on this um so it's not gonna make my day any better it's not gonna help me um i won't get anything out of it so i figured yeah it's not my problem i can't do anything about it so yeah we'll just continue doing what we're doing so i guess that helped me i made a whole video about how i got myself a positive mindset as well um, it took me some time. I got a couple of trainings with um, perfectionism as well because I struggled with that for a long time. But I advise you to watch that video and I do really, really like to talk about this on my streams as well. Elaborate on it and help others with it. I ask questions, for example, what the most positive thing about your day was. And I do really enjoy helping others um, with the positive mindset as well. We're now moving on to the Instagram questions and the first question there is from Ben Overson. His question is, what is your motivation to keep on growing? Um, especially when you look back at your older, let's say for example your streams. When you look back at your older streams, uh, you can do this for the past couple of three months, let's say what your numbers are and stuff. It's really, really motivating to see the growth in that. Um, and also if you want to keep growing and you want to motivate yourself, don't ever compare yourself to others. People that may have started streaming around the same time or uh, whatever, they may have done completely different things and may, they may be growing faster than you, maybe doing different things. Don't compare them to your own growth because it may really bring you down if you're not getting the same growth as they are getting. Next question is from Bear and he asks, what is the code Bear? And we've had this on my stream quite often as well. Bear made up this really funny thing. We make the joke that he's my marketing guy. Um, he always says, if you want to have a mug hug and a plug from me, Mr. Bear, I feel like I know this like from the top of my head by the amount of times that I saw it in my chat. Um, he advises you to go to my merchandise store, buy yourself a fast end mug and a fast end t-shirt. And the code Bear actually works for 10% off on that store. Or it's bear with B A E R, and yes, if you use that, you get 10% off. So that is what Code Bear is all about. Next question is from Laurie Benson, and the question is: favorite song or favorite music genre? And I love how Spotify called me genre fluid last year, meaning that I listened to quite a few different types of music. And that's actually quite true because one of my guilty pleasures is listening to music from the zeros, music from the tens. I really enjoy that type of music. I also really enjoy listening to Latin music. I like the vibe of it. I like that it makes me want to stand up and dance to the music because it it's a really dancey music in, the, in my opinion. And I think my all time favorite song will be uh, by Maroon 5. The song is called She Will Be Loved. I got to see Maroon 5 live last year. Super, super nice. Um, some kind of song just give you feelings and I think that song really brings up a lot of feelings in me for some reason. Next question is from Lori uh, Kapinen, and the question is, do you have a dog? The answer to this is no, sadly. I am allergic to dogs, as what I've told you guys uh, maybe sometimes before in the stream. I'm really sad about this fact, because I absolutely love dogs, all type of dogs, but I'm allergic to dogs, so as soon as I get close to one and I cuddle them and I pet them for a little while, I do really feel this. I get like a runny nose and, and water in my eyes and stuff, um, but it's, it's fine, I'll, I'll take this, I mean. Who does not want to pet a dog, does not want to cuddle a dog. I'll, I'll take the what I get from it, so that's fine. But I don't have a dog and I probably won't have one in the future either, so that's a very sad moment. Uh, next question is from Will and the question is, the what's your favorite part about being a streamer and a content creator? And I love all things about being a streamer content creator, but the one thing I like most is all the love and all the support that I get from everyone in my chat, on my social medias. It is so nice to have all of you there, to have such a nice bond with you guys, to chat with you guys, and to hear all the kind words you guys are saying to me, and that really makes my day. Um, my heart flutters and I, I, I blush from it and stuff, so that's, I think that's my favorite part about being a streamer and content creator. Next question is from Oh That Andrea, and the question is, it's a quite interesting question, because I get this one quite a lot. Um, do you get a lot of abuse being a woman in gaming, especially as Rainbow Six Siege has a fairly toxic community? That's what some people say, and I do see a lot of females on Twitter um, complaining about the fact that they got a lot of harassment in the game. Uh, yes, I get this too, to a certain degree. I do get people that um, 
make fun of me for the fact that I am a girl or they uh, like ask really weird questions whether I would like to marry them and stuff um, but I have to be fairly honest and I do think that the harassment is maybe not as much as a lot of people experience it um, in the game I do play with a five stack quite often I do think that really helps because you're with your friends they can defend you if needed and what I figured as well if I just speak up and if I speak normally people will act just as normal with me as as that I did with them and I, I don't get a lot of harassment but when it happens I try to make like a joke about it and I'll be lighthearted about it and I do think that is the best reaction to give because if they don't get the reaction they want they want to get this angry irritated reaction from you and if you don't give that then what's the fun of harassing you that's my point I think in this the reason that you might see a couple of cuts in um, this video has a couple reasons actually. One is I need to look at the questions on my phone. I don't know them all at the top of my head. And the second is that it's quite sunny uh, like today uh, and out here. So uh, there's spaces on the path where there is a lot of sun and where there's not a lot of sun. And we want to film in the shadows because this gives nice lightning. And if I step onto here, I am just this big one bright void on your screen sunlight is me I am the sun and that doesn't really look too nice on the screen does it the best thing about a, a walk in the forest is not knowing where you exactly are and we see this house that's the only like recognition point and about that that's that's about all so guess we're lost <laughs> I'm pretty sure this was the path we were walking up to. I guess we gotta go right and then we go back to the car. I hope. I assume. Next question is from Astro, and the question is What is it like casting Rainbow Six Seat? In all honesty, it's just one hype moment, in my opinion. Uh, watching these games all by itself brings a lot of tension out for me. I um, really enjoy watching the games. Very tense moments and really big hype. And I've, I've already told you guys that I love to talk. Um, and getting to talk over these games and, and elaborate on what's going on really brings more hype into the game and more tension. And I just really, really enjoy doing it. I'd love to do it more in the future. Next question is from Bam, and the question is, what is your best memory on Twitch? And in my current one and a half, almost two years of streaming, I've experienced a lot of moments on Twitch, um, but one of the things that I really enjoyed most, one of the best memories, was around June, and we were really close to the partner, uh, pushed the partner average, and like we could see the numbers going up to 74, 74.5, and just the hype that we got from everyone, the heartwarming comments, and just the community overall at that point is just, that was one of the, the most loving things that I, if I think back on what I've experienced on Twitch, that's one of the most loving things in my opinion. Next question is from Parker and he asks, other than Siege, what is your favorite game currently? I play a lot of Siege at this point because I'm streaming it full time and other than that, I'm not really playing any other games. Um, but what I said before, I really enjoy playing games like Planet Coaster at this point. It's more of a guilty pleasure, let's say that, um, building roller coasters and stuff, just chilling and enjoying myself, relaxing at that point. I do think that was one of my favorite games that I play off stream at this point. Next question is from Edward. The question is, what's the toughest part about streaming? And I think before I started streaming full time, and this is something that a lot of people may struggle with, is to combine your streaming with uh, other things in life, such as your family, such as hobbies, your friends, uh, school, sleep as well, also really important. Um, that is a thing that I struggled with for a little while, sometimes do struggle with as well. But at the moment, um, like I said, I do really enjoy streaming. There's not really, I don't, I myself, I don't really experience a lot of tough things about it, but maybe sometimes we get a lot of trolls in your chat or a lot of hate in your chat about your game or your rank whatsoever. That is like, let's say the least favorite part of streaming. I wouldn't consider it tough. I always try and like make fun of it or answer it in a funny way. Um, it doesn't really get to me that much as well, but that's like, let's say the least favorite part about streaming. Thank you. 
like I mentioned before in today's video, it's really warm outside. Um, there was, was really sunny where we were, so we decided to go home and film the rest of the video there so we have consistent sunlight and I'm not the white boy that we talked about earlier. Um, on the way home, we decided to get a little stop at the McDonald's to go for um, caramel frappuccino. Those are, yes, I love these. So um, we could use some refreshment and after that, we'll go home and finish the rest of the video there. So we're back home, we're in my garden to be precise and there's quite a few questions still left, especially from Instagram. So we're gonna start answering these um, right now. Next question is from Sebi Norbert and he asked, do you have a hobby? Uh, yes, I have multiple hobbies besides gaming. Um, besides gaming, I really like to watch Formula One. I like to work out, especially dancing. I like to do my nails as I show you guys on stream as well. And yeah, I think those are like my main hobbies at this moment. There's like smaller hobbies as well, but those are the most important ones in my life at this moment of time. Next question is from Dan and this is a quite funny one because he says, Hi Anne, how are you? In Anne's voice. So. I'm gonna try and do it as I as I like normally do this on stream. Hi Anne, how are you? I apparently always ask like ask this in the same way, and people have notified me about this as well. And I I don't know. I'm sorry if I fall into your feet, but apparently I always do this in the same kind of way. <laughs> Next question is from Quinton. Uh, says, can you do a backflip? P.S. You're amazing. No, you're amazing. But no, I can't do a backflip. Can't do a front flip either. I'm not that flexible or um, that I can do like a lot of tricks, but no, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's questions from Pablo asking, will you visit me in Poland sometime and please bring Colin. I would love to visit you one day, Kowalski. Um, would be very nice. I mean, we've been talking for a long time. So um, if I ever am, if I ever happen to be in Poland, I will, uh, I'll let you know, it'd be fun. Next question is from Ender asking, uh, your dream job if Twitch wasn't a thing? That's a, that's a difficult one. Um, like when I was younger, I was always shouting around that I either wanted to be a fashion designer, a soccer, football, whatever you want to call it, referee. Yes, I know, it's kind of strange. Um, but maybe I'd like to do something like, you know, an actress. I do think that would suit me. Or I'd like to make a living out of dancing because I still really enjoy dancing. That would be like one of my dream jobs if Twitch wasn't a thing, I suppose. Next question is from Roy is asking, what sort of operator would you add to Rainbow Six Siege? Um, first of all, there is one reason why I'm not in the operator design team for Rainbow Six Siege, because I would consider myself a creative person, but if I was to think about what kind of operator I want to see in Siege, I genuinely have no clue at all. I like the current roster of operators. I do think there's a lot of like certain different abilities already. And in all honesty, I don't have an answer to your question. I do not know what I would ask to see at this point. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't know. I genuinely don't know. Next question is from Shock Inside asking, do you drink wine? Yes. <laughs> I like wine, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Next question is from Chase asking, what is your favorite slash dream car? And I know a lot of you will make fun of me for saying this. Um, and I know a lot of you won't have the same favorite dream car, that's fine. But I have always wanted a Mini Cooper. I think those are adorable, especially the ones where you have the convertibles, where you have like the option to have a cabrio and not cabrio car. I, I just love Mini Coopers. They've been my dream car since I was younger and I've, I still want one, so yeah, that's my favorite slash dream car. Next question is from Siege God asking, how about you and me joining the same team for a pro league? Um, I've told you guys this multiple times before, I do not have the ambition to play this game professionally uh, or to ever grow into playing, for example, pro league and stuff. I'd rather have the ambition to do something different in pro league, uh, such as casting or being the analyst of the show, uh, for example. Next question is from Nexus asking, what do you do when you have viewers on your stream but the chat's dry? Good question. Um, I'm glad you've asked because I like elaborating on these kind of things. Sometimes you do indeed have viewers but they're lurking or they're just chilling and that is totally fine. Don't get me wrong, I appreciate you if you're in my stream. Whether you're talking or whether you're doing something else in, in the process in the meantime as well, I appreciate you just being there and hanging out. And yes, your chat may run slower from time to time, but what I personally do if I experience this is I just start talking to myself. I start 
explaining what I'm doing in seat, why I'm doing specific things. I'm telling a story just to myself or Trevor who's listening and maybe someone will pick it up and, and answer uh, a question I asked or or um, like talk about me with, uh, talk about the subject as well. Or whenever someone asks me a question, I will return this question to chat. So I'll answer the question and then ask, okay, so chat, what's your favorite operator? What's your favorite type of food, whatsoever? So I either talk to myself, make a story, or I ask a question to the chat. Now it's time for some out of context sheeps and chickens for no reason at all. Back to the show. I also got a question in Russian, which I, a language that I do not understand. I only know a couple of bad words in that language, but I used my phone in order to translate it. And this is what Google Translate taught me. I'm gonna turn the volume up. Привет из России. Как ты себе русский человек представляешь? Yes. So it says, greetings from Russia. How do you imagine a Russian person? In all honesty, I get the question a lot. I don't have anything against any countries, any uh, people. Um, and the only thing I know, or the only picture I have from people from Russia is from Life with Boris. So I think it's better if I do not answer this question at all. Next question is from Ryan asking, how tall are you? And yes, I get this question quite often. And yes, I am small. I am about one meter, 60 centimeters, which is approximately five feet three. So, um, yes, N is small. Next question is from No Need to Fake Gaming, which we call Manu on stream, uh, asking, send me the Moss Files. And yes, we make a joke about the Moss Files quite often when someone does something that's quite suspicious, as in you'd accuse them of hacking. Um, you ask them to send the Moss Files, because in the Moss Files you can see what kind of programs everyone's running on their PC, and whether they're running specific hacks or not. And no, not hacking, so I'm not running moss either, so I can't send you my moss files, I'm sorry. This is gonna sound hella suspicious, but yes. Next question is from Tayo asking, what is your favorite food? Um, I have a couple of things that I really enjoy eating, such as the Italian cuisine, like pizza and pasta and stuff, and I also really, really like sushi. So the last question is a question that got asked quite a few times, um, and I'm gonna like combine the questions all together and answer it. Uh, most of these are about the same when did you start streaming and why did you start streaming? I started streaming consistently in October 2018. Before that I had a couple of streams where I just occasionally streamed on a Saturday uh, evening or afternoon but consistently I started from October 2018 and I started streaming because like I said before I do really enjoy talking, I enjoy playing the game and I would like to combine these so I have the option to talk to people whilst playing a game and that's something I really really enjoy. So those were all the questions that you guys sent to me through Instagram and YouTube. Thank you all for sending me your awesome questions. I do really enjoy answering these questions. Some of them were really um, like about Twitch, about tips and stuff and some about me and I really really liked answering these and like I said I was a teacher my job was to explain things um, so thank you so much to those of you who asked me a question thank you as well for watching the video I appreciate it a lot and I'll see you in the next video bloopers and I was just very surprised I was really happy with this chance and yeah